Well, good morning, everyone. It's really good to see so many here today. And we'd like to give you all a uh, warm welcome to our special Easter praise service. In some ways, um, Saturday becomes the anticlimax in an Easter weekend because you've got, well, I won't say the hype, but you've got the excitement and the certain celebration of the crucifixion for the Friday. You've got the enjoyment of the resurrection on Sunday, but absolutely nothing happens on Saturday, which is the way it should be. It's the day of rest, and even God allowed Christ to stay in the tomb just for one day to rest before the great climax that happens tomorrow morning. But anyway, I'm thankful that you've come along today. I know some of you have had to uh, interrupt your busy schedule uh, to be able to squeeze this in, and I do appreciate you making that effort. Um, to uh, Pete and uh, Snow and to their family, extended family, we do extend our condolences again uh, for the loss of... Yeah. <laughs> Surely, God, no, Thursday evening. And at this stage, there have been uh, no funeral arrangements, so if you just keep your ears peeled uh, to the uh, radio, those will come in, in due course. Uh, just a few announcements, folks, just before we get our um, program rolling. Our offering today is uh, for our local church and covers our local operating expenses and things like that. If you enjoy the sing-along now and the music now and you want a, even a little bit more of it, then come back again at 5.30 this afternoon because we sit down and we, we um, sing lustily and, uh, for half an hour. And today, Snow is leading the singing and Dad, you've got the story or the devotional afterwards. Lance has, okay. Um, Tuesday evening, we have our um, Bible study and prayer meeting time, 7.15, and we're looking at Daniel chapter 7 as part of the Bible study. Uh, elders, please, if we could have a meeting this afternoon at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, please. Um, now... No, let's, let's just finish with other local stuff. We've got a business meeting at quarter past seven on uh, Thursday evening. And then in a fortnight's time, we have a church lunch, and everyone's invited to that. You visitors as well, if you don't want to cook on lunch on uh, Saturday on the 17th, come along. We've got plenty of wettles. Um, now, tomorrow morning, quarter to six, so that means you'll have to get up at five o'clock Ladies, probably half past four, so you can pretty yourselves up nicely. But there is a sunrise service up at Mount Pitt at a quarter to six. Uh, commencing quarter to six, all right. And then at 10 o'clock, is it, Chris, for your... Yes, and when was the... I don't have the Anglican one here. When was the Church of England? Nine, yes, because Church of England and all nations uh, have a... Um, their Sunday service at 9 o'clock and then Uniting Church at 11 o'clock. So feel... 10, 10, my apologies. So feel free to attend any of those. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'd like to invite you to stand, please. We all start our uh, program off this morning with the singing of the Old Rugged Cross. Thank you.
Thank you. Please be seated. I think uh, you, ukulele band, have a seat here. Yes. Yeah. And I need to give a special welcome to the ukulele band for coming up and uh, supporting us uh, today for this Easter program. And we appreciate it very much. Um, we'd like to, uh, we'll, we'll uplift the offering now. Just a slight change, so I'll take the offering up now. And the band will be playing for us Amazing Grace. You'll remember that in 1772 this song was written, not back in 1970-something, um, 1970, when Judy Collins made it popular. Um, John Newton wrote it, and John Newton once was a slave trader, but um, his conversion off the coast of Ireland in a ship that was sinking changed the course of his history changed the course of um, slave trading, actually, because he was instrumental in changing that dreaded practice just a f in a few years after that. So thank you, um, Ukulele Band, if you'd like to play that amazing grace for us and we'll uplift the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, dear Lord, for the blessings that you bestow upon us, dear Father. And we pray, dear Lord, that <coughs> these offerings and tithes may be blessed in your service, dear Lord, wherever it's used, that it may be used wisely in your service. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. One of the traditional prayers for uh, Norfolk Islanders is the prayer of uh, John Adams, the prayer of another converted man, because when he originally arrived on Pitcairn, he was anything but. And it's interesting that he learnt to read from the Bible, and in doing that, the words of the Bible changed his life completely. He became a converted man. And so he wrote a short prayer which uh, Don has set to music. And I don't know about you, but once you've got the music in your head, the rest of the words seem to stay. It's easier, well, easier for me to remember words to music like that. And so um, we'd like to share with you, the, uh, Don and the band would like to share with you the John, prayer of John Adams in song.
Let's join in the privilege of prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the many ways that we can worship you, dear Lord, in song, in practice of what we do in our lives, dear Lord, as we <clears throat> mingle in the community, a helping hand, a kind word, a loving support to people in need or in, who are in requirement of love because you are love dear Lord and because of your love we are all here today Heavenly Father we think of <coughs> the love that is needed for Uncle Pete Al <coughs> Grant and Ed and we pray dear Lord that the Holy Spirit may be upon them during this time of grief dear Lord we pray that dear Father that the grief may not last too long because of the promise that you have of we are seeing Auntie Shirley again soon, very soon. Heavenly Father, we think of all those people that who are sick and suffering, dear Lord, the, the ones up on the veranda, dear Father, I pray that you be with each and every one of them and that uh, through some miracle, dear Lord, they may be healed, but mainly that they may be comforted and know that you are with them and all they have to do is look to you, dear Father, and reach out and say the words, I believe. Heavenly Father, so much trouble going on around the world, dear Lord, and we are very lucky to live here on this little island, dear Father. But we think of the turmoil that's going on in Myanmar at the moment, dear Father, where p people are being persecuted and murdered for nothing other than knowing you. And we pray, dear Lord, for those people, that they may find a safe haven, dear Lord, somewhere where you can show them, dear Lord, to um, escape these, these terrible things that are going on there, dear Father. And I just pray for their safety and, and that someone may look after them, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all, all of your love. And we just pray, dear Lord, as we go through our service today, that our worship of you in song and spirit, dear Lord, may be acceptable in your sight. I pray in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Now, our uh, next uh, song that we'd like to share with you this morning is Let the Lower Lights Be Burning. It's a uh, song that is familiar to Norfolk Islanders and has its link back to the old whaling days when the whalers used to be coming and towing their catch late in the evening and uh, folks around the clifftops would light fires in, in order to help guide them uh, to a safe landing. Um, it talks of our lost condition and talks of our need to be rescued, which is a fitting theme for Easter. And because in the, in, in the very beginning, when God created the earth, everything was perfect. There was no need of rescue until Adam and Eve decided to disobey God and choose a different path. And from that point on, we were in need of rescue. And that's the, what the Easter story is all about, that Christ came, died, rested, and rose again. And... Um, this uh, um, beautiful uh, hymn uh, talks about that, but from a nautical theme, if you like, and uh, I think the imagery is beautiful. So let the lower lights be burning. Kath will be um, singing this, and she'll be accompanied by the ba band. Thank you. And I'm sorry, and Alison's joining her too. Yes, indeed. That's right here, Kath and Alison.
I'd like to uh, in, um, intro introducing the next item, which is uh, Gethsemane. I'd like to read from Mark's chapter, uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 32 through to 42. They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, "Sit here while I go and pray." He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them. My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation, for the spirit is willing, but it's the body that's weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed the same prayer as before. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know what to say. When he turned to them the third time, when he returned to them the third time, he said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But no, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. This uh, favourite hymn that we're going to sing now paints a beautiful word picture of the night that Jesus was betrayed. And as Anson and the band perform it for you, I wonder why don't you just close your eyes and try to imagine the scene that took place some 2,000 years ago. And remember, he did this especially for you and for me. Okay, thanks uh, Anson and the band. Thank you. Oh uh... 
next song that we'd like to share with you is Oakley. Oakley has a special place for me because uh, it was my great-grandfather who wrote this. Uh, and I often wonder whether he wrote other hymns uh, as well. And if he did, where are they stored? Who's got them in their attic or some box somewhere or gathering dust? Um, but this one too uh, captures the uh, cry of a penitent sinner, sinner asking to be made right with God. And it's because of the song that we just sang, Gethsemane, that we are able to be made right with God because it's Christ who has done that. It's not up to us. We, as uh, David Fell yes said yesterday in the sermon down there, there's a test. And none of us are capable of passing the test. And that's just the fact of the matter. We strive to, but all of our striving will never get there. Christ passed the test. And if we accept his pass mark, his 100%, then God says, I'll give you 100% too. It's yours for the taking, it's yours for the asking. Um, it almost seems wrong uh, that you could take a test and they'll give you 100% regardless of what you write on the paper. But that's basically what God is doing for us. He says, I've covered this, I've taken care of it, all you need to do is turn up if we're going to put it in the imagery of a, an examination. Jesus also said, there's no one who comes to me that I'll turn around and kick out. No one. No matter how bad you've been, no matter how good you think you've been, you come to Christ and he does not turn anyone away. And that's a wonderful promise. And this, te this uh, song that we'll share with you also points to the life to come, the promise of that. So Wes is going to lead us in this beautiful hymn, Oakley, and the band will accompany him. Thanks, Wes.
We'd like to uh, share with you now a good old favourite, the Ship of Fame. Alison Marie and the band will be doing that. It takes us to a, another step in this Easter story. Of course, the imagery here is taken from the journey of the children of Israel, leaving their land of captivity, Egypt, and heading off to Canaan, the Promised Land. It too is uh, set in a nautical metaphor um, this time. There's a beautiful line in the refrain which I suggest has helped to underscore our culture here on Norfolk where the captain says there's room for you and room for millions more. And that's what salvation is all about. There is room for millions more. The price has been paid, your ship fare has been taken care of and as I just said before, it's yours for the asking and there's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. So thank you, Alison and Marie, and the band will share this with you right now. Thank you.
We move on now to the promise of an eternal home. And without uh, taking too much of uh, Chris's thunder for tomorrow, I hope I don't take any of it. There's two, two points that I want to uh, bring out. First, uh, one by um, way of just a, a um, amusing little anecdote. And some of you have heard this before, but um, a Sunday school teacher on Easter Sunday morning with her little kids was talking about Christ coming out of the tomb. And she said to the class, she says, and what do you think Jesus said when he first came out of the tomb? And of course, one little girl put her hand up and said, (laughs) ta-da! And the more I think about that, the more I think Christ just might have said that, ta-da. In fact, I think he would have gone, (laughs) ta-da! Because he's saying to the devil at last, you now have been defeated. I have died. You killed God. He literally did. And I, in my mind, imagine that Friday evening, the devil had the grandest party the demons had ever had because at last they had gained their goal. They had killed God. And I dare say it went on over the Friday night, the Saturday, the Saturday night. But honestly, folk, I wish I could have been an angel somewhere to see the face of the devil and his cohorts as that stone was rolled away and out came Jesus. (laughs) Ta-da! Victory. The other thing I like is that John says, and I've written about this in the the article in the paper, I hope it went in. John says, when he and Peter looked inside the tomb, there were a couple of angels in there arranging the um, grave clothes and that they had folded up the headpiece neatly. And I have wondered what on earth that ever meant. It means this. If you go back to Middle Eastern culture, you find that if you were dining and you needed to go to the bathroom, you would fold your table napkin carefully and neatly and leave it by your plate and leave. And as the waiter came past, he would see that and to the waiter, it was a symbol or a sign, don't touch this place, I, this plate, I am coming back. If you had left, and because you, well, you don't want to stay anymore, you would just drop the napkin and just leave it crumbled and not rearrange it or do anything. And it's interesting that Jesus gives this little sign. I can imagine him just as he's turning and coming out of the tomb, whispering to one of the angels, we don't forget to fold it neatly. There's a secret message here. And he does. And they leave it folded neatly and the message is loud and clear. I am coming back. He didn't just disappear and say, right, job done. Thank you, Father. It's, it's all it's all cup high down there. It's all good. No. I'm coming back for you people. And I want to read this um, uh, first uh, from John chapter 14 verses 1 through to 3 don't you don't let your hearts be troubled trust in God and trust also in me there is more than enough room in my father's house room for millions more if this were not so would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you when everything is ready I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am beautiful promise He is coming back because he wants us to be with him. He's that kind of God. We're going to share with you now this uh, uh, hymn uh, in the suite by and by. We'd like the congregation to uh, join in with us on this. It continues that theme of the ship of fame of going over the Jordan and arriving in uh, in the promised land. The infamous trial, the crucifixion, the rest in the grave over the Sabbath, and finally his glorious resurrection early on the Sunday morning, all of that now guarantees our salvation, our assurance of eternal life with him, where there will be no more separation. And once again, there is this imagery of crossing over the Jordan into the promised land. And once again, there's that nautical motive behind it all. It's no wonder then that this hymn has been so loved on Norfolk. After we've sung that song, and I'd like you to stand for it, I'd like you to remain standing because we're going to do something just a little special after that. We're going to sing the Norfolk anthem. 
the band will sing it to you in Norfolk first and then the second time round you can join in and we'll sing it in English. All right, so then sweet by and by.
which I bow our heads. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of music and we thank you that we can centre it around the theme of your death, your rest and your resurrection. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to remember that we are your children. You wish us to dwell with you eternally. We pray, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again for coming. Thank you.